So I'll start by thanking the organizers for putting all the efforts uh, to make this happen. So today I'll be talking about uh, a work we have been doing for past one year um, on associating fast radio bursts with compact binary mergers using gravitational lensing. So I'll just start. Uh, what are fast radio bursts? These are basically uh, bright millisecond radio pulses coming from extra galactic uh, distances. And uh, since the, the very first fast radio burst we detected in uh, 2007 by, past, uh, by Parkes Radio Telescope in Australia. Since then, uh, with the more sensitive um, detectors, for example, this one at the bottom uh, called CHIME, which is a uh, Canadian uh, telescope, we have detected a few hundreds of them. But still, the origin of uh, these, uh, uh, these pulses is uh, still an open question. So the very first guess, I don't know if you people can guess, was that there are some aliens, aliens which are suiting these laser uh, pulses. But that basically you can rule out with the simple uh, isotopy of these sources. So what are the proposed sources? Uh, one of the proposed sources are magnetars, uh, which are nothing but a rotating uh, highly magnetized, magnetized neutron stars. Uh, these are especially the sources of repeating fast radio uh, bursts. But there are alternative models which are also credible, especially for non-repeating fast radio bursts. So you only see single pulses. And this includes uh, mergers of compact binary mergers, which also emit uh, gravitational waves along with the, along with the uh, fast radio bursts. Now, among these compact binary coalescences, uh, this includes a merger of two neutron, neutron stars, which is uh, known as binary neutron star merger, and then also neutron star black hole merger, and then also uh, binary black hole merger. So the focus of my talk will be on these uh, sources, whether these sources uh, could be associated with these fast radio bursts which have been observed till now, or we will be observing in future. So uh, we can ask the question whether anybody has done this uh, uh, to find this association. Well, LIGO, Virgo, Kagra uh, people, uh, the collaboration that did this search in its third observing run, and it actually looked for temporal and spatial coincidences of gravitational waves uh, observed that time, and as well as the FRBs. And they basically looked for the arrival times of these pulses, as well as the sky locations and distance. And they did not find any confident association, uh, but the association uh, could not be uh, ruled out either. This is primarily because of the uh, various limitations of these searches. One of them being the, there's a large uncertainty in the measurement of luminosity distance. So as you can see in the plot uh, on the right, so the black error bars here, black horizontal line, these actually corresponds to the error, error on the measurement of uh, luminosity distance for FRBs. So these are actually more than of order of magnitudes. Similar is the issue for the measurement of luminosity distance for uh, gravitational signals as well. So that is one limitation. Another being the sky localization. So for gravitational waves, the sky localization is very poor. Uh, it is typically of the order of 100 square degree for, um, for these compact binaries. So this is one of the example. This plot is actually I've taken from a paper recently, which came out, and they actually claimed an association of an FRB with a uh, BNS merger, which we detected in uh, third observing run, or actually second, I don't remember, sorry. Uh, so the point is that the, low, the heat, the, the density map, as you can see, this is the localization for the GW uh, event, which is quite huge, actually. And this dot here, cyan dot, this actually corresponds to the localization of the past radio burst. So you can actually localize, you can associate anything in this if the uncertainty in the localization is very, uh, very large. But they claim that they have, detect, uh, they have found the association and this is at a 2.8 sigma confidence, not very great. So now the third uh, limitation, which is the, the crucial one also, that you don't know the time after which the merger, this signal is emitted. This is very uncertain. Um, and also, in fact, you don't even know whether these FRBs, in fact, there are some models which claim that uh, FRBs are being emitted in the pre-merger rather than post-merger. So there's a huge uncertainty. So can we bypass these uncertainties and find uh, some novel way to, or some more efficient way to uh, search these associations? So we, we look for, so we consider an astrophysical scenario where uh, there is a, compact binary source emitting, uh, we assume that it is emitting both gravitational signals as well as FRBs. And if it is lensed by a, a galaxy, 
then it will have multiple images for both the sources. Uh, for gravitational waves, it will be uh, repeated uh, signals with amplitudes rescaled, but they will have some time delay. And similar, uh, you will have, similarly, you will have for uh, FRVs as well. And the interesting thing is that the time delays uh, for both of these uh, messengers should be same because the lens is same, right? So instead of looking for the arrival times of these uh, in these uh, different signals or the sky localizations, you just look for the time delays. So if these time delays are same, right? You can claim uh, an unambiguous association. Why? Because the time time measurement in uh, both sides, uh, as well as GW, as well as uh, FRB, it's pretty accurate, actually. You can measure up to um, milliseconds in GW and up to nanoseconds in FRB. So, so we do some simulation study here, uh, considering the upcoming LIGO-VIGO uh, observing, LIGO-VIGO Kagra observing scenario, known as O4, this is fourth observing run. And we consider a population of neutral star black hole merger, which uh, we consider to be the most likely sources of uh, these, uh, these fast radio bursts. So we consider uh, uh, lens, our lenses as galaxies, and then you get the time delay distribution for lens, uh, Newton star black hole mergers as this blue curve here. This is peaking around some uh, few months of the order of three months. But then you make an assumption here, which is very crucial here, that we assume that both uh, fast radio bursts and gravitational waves have same uh, horizon distance. What it means, the detectors are sensitive to approximately similar, um, similar distances um, in the universe. So what it means, it means that they will have same time delay distribution, which is uh, detected. So for the detected ones, you see this orange curve here. So you see this, this is uh, sifted towards uh, left. That means you only see smaller distances, hence the smaller time delays as compared to the intrinsic one. But radio telescopes are not actually all sky. They are finite field of view. So they look at only a patch of sky. Hence, you will only see a, limit, uh, a smaller time delay. It means like you won't be able to see a longer time delay because if you see first image, second image might come quite later. And it might not be in the field of view. And the, since the detector is fixed on the Earth, it might move uh, because of the rotation of the Earth. So it will further limit the uh, time delay detected by radio telescopes. And that is the green curve here. So you don't really see any time delays beyond um, one day. But there's another interesting thing I will come, come back to later that you can see because of the rotation of the Earth, time delay is greater than one, um, one day as well. So we consider the rate of association for such uh, scenarios to happen. And if you consider this observing scenario, we, we find that uh, the rate is very, so rate is uh, one in thousand years. So considering the span of uh, upcoming run, uh, to be two years, there's only 0.2% chance that you will see in, uh, such an association. So not very good. Okay. Moving on further, you can ask the question whether you can falsely associate these kind of, uh, because there will be an uncertainty in the measurement of time uh, always, right? So by considering that uncertainty, can you, uh, can you tell us what is the confident, uh, confidence here that uh, by which you can associate? So it turns out that the association confidence is greater than five sigma here. Now, as I mentioned in the last to last slide, that the rate is very, very low in the coming observing. Event. But you can ask the question whether if you look for 10 years or 15 years in future, what, what do you what do you see? Or do you see any improvement? So the horizontal, these three different plots correspond to three different observing scenarios of gravitational wave detectors. So the O5 corresponds to the fifth observing run. And then Voyager is a, a factor of few improvement in the sensitivity of the detectors. In third generation, it will have an order of magnitude. And what you see that as the detectors become, GW detectors become more and more sensitive, you will start seeing larger and larger time delays, which is evident from this plot. If you see this orange distribution is kind of shifting to, uh, towards right. And in fact, in 3G, you will see everything almost. But what, what happens for uh, these radio telescopes, if you don't increase the field of view, the fraction of detected uh, time delays will, will decrease because you're seeing a lot more, lot more of them uh, to be uh, larger, uh, larger time delays. So what you, can, what, you, what you can consider a scenario, for example, if you have a, a radio telescope which is quite wide in uh, field of view, uh, which is uh, burst here. So I, I actually forgot to mention that time has a field of view 
two minutes. A uh, chime has a field of your 200 square degrees. Burst has a field of your of uh, approximate. Uh, it's 10,000 square degrees, so factor of 50 improvement. And hence, it will see larger time delays, as you can see. The red curve here is kind of shifting towards right, so it's looking at um, able to absorb larger time delays. Okay, what are the rates? I already mentioned that in time, uh, if you consider time telescope, uh, radio telescope, the rates are very pretty uh, marginal here. But uh, if you consider a burst scenario, so at least if not in O5, at least in Voyager scenario, you can uh, either associate, find an association or rule out this possibility that compact binary mergers could be the source of these um, FRVs. But I also consider this uh, scenario where the telescopes are covering all sky, which is too optimistic to say. I also consider, uh, I also compute these rates for BNS mergers, uh, for which the rates turns out to be, um, rates turn out to be uh, marginally better than. And this is primarily due to the fact that uh, rates, the intrinsic rate of BNS mergers is, uh, is larger. Okay, I'll just skip this part in the interest of time. So we can do something, this was the strong lensing scenario when uh, both, uh, uh, both FRB as well as the gravitational waves, uh, wavelength is very, very small than the size of the lens, which is galaxy. And in that scenario, suppose if you see a lensed FRB uh, and you see one FRB image within the coincident time window with, of the gravitational wave, you see only one image, then you can search for the second sub-threshold image of GW. And then similarly, you can do uh, vice versa also. And the same idea can work for uh, GRVs as well, but it might not be, uh, okay, I better not talk about microlensing here. Let me summarize here. So you can, using the gravitational lensing of uh, sig GW signals and FRBs emitted, let me conclude. <laughs> so, if you see both the signals and the, the time delays, you can actually make an uh, association with, uh, which will be confident greater than five sigma. And you can, more than that, actually you can constrain the time delay in the emission of an FRB after the CVC merger. So that is the uh, um, approach you can follow to even, uh, rather than just association, you can measure the, some uncertain parameters. So I'll just end with this. Thank you.